Good morning. My name is Altaf Stationwala, President and CEO of Mackenzie Health. On behalf of Mackenzie Health, I'd like to welcome you all to the Cordelucci Vaughan Hospital at the Giovanni de Gasparis and Eugene Cohn Learning Center in the Berwick Family Auditorium. Thank you for joining us. I'd like to acknowledge Premier Ford, Minister Jones, Minister Dunlop, Minister Lecce, Dr. Rhonda Lenton, Mayor Del Duca, and other elected officials here today. I'd like to also acknowledge the chair and the vice chair of our board of directors, McKenzie Health executive leadership team, and members of our physician leadership who are joining us here today. McKenzie Health is excited to host this special announcement, and we're even more excited to be here as a lead partner on this important journey. We're here at Cordelucci Vaughan Hospital on the Vaughan Healthcare Center precinct lands, just a few kilometers away from McKenzie Richmond Hill Hospital. Today's announcement will further build upon the vision of the Vaughan Healthcare Center precinct as an exceptional center for healthcare excellence. Our community will reap the benefits of this work for years to come, and we're looking forward to what lies ahead. Before passing it over to Minister Leshe to say a few words, I'd like to acknowledge that Mackenzie Health is situated on treaty lands that have been lived on and cared for by generations of the Mississauga, Mississaugas of the Credit. It is the traditional territory of other First Nation, including the Haudenosaunee and the Wendat. This land is currently home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people today. Mackenzie Health is grateful for the opportunity to deliver essential care to patients in this territory. Thanks again for joining us here at Mackenzie Health. Now I'd like to pass it over to Minister Lecce. Well, good morning, everyone. It's amazing to see you. As we look outside these windows, we see a vision coming to life. It started with the accelerated opening of the Cordelucci Vaughan Hospital as announced by Premier Ford. Then imagine the new state-of-the-art long-term care home that will soon be under construction just steps away on the land surrounding this hospital. Down the street at the McKenzie Urgent Care Center, our government funded and opened a day program for Alzheimer's patients with chats. We expanded and funded beds at Hospice Vaughan. To our north, we ensured York Region's first PET CT scanner was open at South Lake Hospital with improvements made to the Stronic Cancer Care Center and the expansion of mental health beds. And now today, we take another step forward as we commit the funds to build Vaughan's first medical school that will focus on helping ensure families have access to medical care. A modern hospital, a new long-term care home, a youth mental hub center, and soon a medical school in the heart of our community serving families in Vaughan and King and well beyond. It is visionary leadership under our Premier's leadership that is making a difference. And I am grateful to the Premier and to my many cabinet colleagues with us today for supporting Laura Smith, Michael Tabolo, and my local priority, top priority here in the city of Vaughan, a priority shared by our caucus from Simcoe and York and well beyond. We are getting this done and delivering a center of excellence around this hospital, serving our community, keeping our families healthy and safe. And it must be said, a message of gratitude to York University, to Mackenzie Health, to the city of Vaughan and council, but most of all, to the people of Vaughan with us today. Because our government's commitment, we are ensuring better health care, closer to home, is becoming a reality. And this is a legacy we can be proud of. Now with that, I'm proud to introduce a partner in this project, our mayor, His Worship, Stephen Del Duca. Thank you so much. Thank you, Minister. Thank you. <clears throat> well, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is such an incredibly momentous day for our incredible city, uh, the city of Vaughan. And I, I have to tell you, I believe that I have by far the easiest job here this morning because my job is simply to express immense gratitude. Immense gratitude, of course, starting with the Premier. You know, I don't think it was that long ago, maybe a few years ago now, when a lot of people across Ontario would have found this scene, this very scene, me standing at a podium thanking Doug Ford. <laughs> you didn't even wait for the punchline there. <laughs> thanking Doug Ford to be, at the very best, improbable. But I will tell you something that I've learned in so many different ways over the past couple of years since becoming mayor. And this is something the Premier and I have talked about a number of times. 
the people that we are all honored to represent, they don't care about party stripe as much as sometimes those of us in the arena think they do. They don't think about levels of government the way that those of us who study civics and live it every single day do. What they look at are the results. What they look at is the ability that we have on their behalf to work together in partnership and to collaborate. And I have to tell you, since becoming mayor of this city, I have found Premier Ford to be an extraordinarily accessible and welcoming partner on so many different fronts. And I want to say very clearly from this podium today, yes, of course, thank you for what we are going to hear, the good news that we are going to hear today. But almost more than that, thank you for being such an approachable and such an accessible leader here in our province. Thank you very much, Premier Ford. I also want to say thank you to Minister Lecce. Minister Lecce and his Vaughan colleagues, uh, MPP Smith and Minister Tobolo. Uh, Minister Lecce and I have had so many conversations about this initiative. I have seen firsthand exactly how strong his advocacy has been uh, to help us get to this point today. So thank you very much, Minister Lecce. All of the other ministers and caucus members from across York Region and Simcoe Region and beyond who are here today, it is so exciting to see everyone who's here. I think this helps to underscore and emphasize how important today's announcement is for the families in this region and frankly beyond this region and across Ontario. It is great to see this incredible turnout. York University, Dr. Rhonda Lenton. Now, Dr. Lenton and I have had, again, many conversations about this initiative. I know that the conversations relating to a medical school for York University started so many years ago. And there are leaders who would have given up the fight long before today. Rhonda Lenton and the entire team at York University have never shied away from this challenge. They have never shirked their responsibility. They've never ducked. They've been strong. They've been persistent. Let me say, they've been persistent, really <laughs> persistent, in a good way. And that's one of the many reasons that we are here today. My council colleagues, most of whom are here today who believe passionately in the need to build out this Vaughan Healthcare precinct here in our city, anchored by Cordelucci Vaughan Hospital and to Altoff and the team, this is by far the very best hospital in the entire province, if not the country. Thank you for what you do as a council. Thank you for what you do here at Mackenzie Health. And as Minister Lecce mentioned just a moment ago, to people right across the city of Vaughan and beyond, a thank you for understanding the importance again of collaboration and collegiality and working together know fully that today's announcement is all about making your life better. And that's why it's such an exciting day for me as mayor of the city of Vaughan. It's an exciting day for the families in this community who rely on top quality health care and will for many years to come. And I, for one, am looking forward to the ambitious journey that we are on as a community to deliver fully, to deliver fully on the promise of the Vaughan health care precinct. Thank you all for being here today, and it's now my honor to invite Minister Dunlop, Minister of Colleges and Universities, to the podium. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mayor Del Duca, and good morning, everyone. I'm thrilled to be here alongside Premier Ford and my colleagues to show my support for York University's new School of Medicine. As Minister of Colleges and Universities, I have seen Ontario's post-secondary institutions time and time again use education and training to address their community's most pressing challenges. York University School of Medicine will be the latest to join this legacy. Our government is proud to invest in Ontario's post-secondary institutions because we recognize that our colleges and universities are teaching and training the doctors and healthcare professionals of tomorrow. To date this academic year, we've invested over $30 million into the Ontario Learn and Stay grant. This groundbreaking grant is a true win-win. It covers educational costs for students studying in healthcare programs in underserved communities and eventually provides these communities with the in-demand healthcare professionals that they need. Through initiatives like this, our government and its post-secondary partners are making sure Ontario's students are prepared with the skills and training to help them secure good jobs and ensuring Ontarians are getting the high quality health care they need and deserve. To tell you more about that, I'll now pass it over to my colleague, Minister Sylvia Jones, the Minister of Health.
Thank you, Jill, and good morning, everyone. It is indeed great to be here today alongside Premier Ford, Minister Dunlop, Minister Lecce, and of course, many Queen's Park colleagues, York University and community leaders, to celebrate our government's investment to establish a brand new medical school at York University. That will grow our work healthcare workforce for years to come. Congratulations. Under the leadership of Premier Ford, our government is making record investments in healthcare to ensure no matter where you live, you can connect to the right care in the right place. Last year, we added a record number of new physicians and nurses to Ontario, and our government is continuing to build on that progress. We are launching the largest expansion of the medical school education system in over 15 years adding hundreds of new undergraduate and residency seats across Ontario, and breaking down barriers for internationally and interprovincially educated healthcare workers to make it easier and faster to work in Ontario. And through our government's, the 2024 budget, building a better Ontario, we are continuing to make record investments to connect you to the care you need close to home. We are investing $546 million to connect 600,000 more people to primary care through new and expanded interprofessional primary care teams, and $740 million over three years so that we can continue to address immediate healthcare staffing needs while growing the healthcare workforce for years to come. Under the leadership of Premier Ford, we are getting it done for Ontarians. Thank you again for all of your community partners here for joining us and for this exciting announcement. It's now my honour to hand it over to Dr. Lenton to say a few words. Stay well. Thank you so much, Minister Jones. Good morning, everyone. Bonjour. Bonjour. Today is an important day for our beautiful province, and it's a milestone moment for York University. As some of you may know, York was established in 1965 with a vision to provide a broad demographic of students access to a high quality research intensive university committed to serving the well being of all of our surrounding communities. Since its inception, York has had aspirations for a medical school. We first started developing our proposal more than 10 years ago. When we embarked on this endeavor, our dedication to serving the people of Ontario was resolute. They were the focal point, the focal point of our mission right from the start, fueling our determination to create a significant impact in their lives and the broader community. We know that the population of Ontario is growing and that York Region's population, for example, is expected to grow by 35% by 2041, a faster growth rate compared to all of Ontario, and that currently Canada does not produce enough comprehensive, practice-ready primary care physicians. According to the Ontario College of Family Doctors, there are already 2.3 million Ontarians without a family doctor. By 2026, it is projected that one in four will be without a family doctor. York's vision for a school of medicine aims to prepare the next generation of family doctors and other primary care general specialists who represent the diversity of the communities in which they live to not only thrive in a new integrative team-based healthcare environment, but to continue to adapt to the evolving needs of their patients. We are a global leader in health with over 15 years of success advancing interdisciplinary health programs in multiple faculties, six health-specific interdisciplinary organized research units, 42 research chairs in health, over 250 faculty members actively conducting research in health-related fields, dozens of research collaborations in more than 30 countries, and 10,000 students in health 
and health science programs, and thousands more in related fields, including engineering, science, the environment, law, social science, business, and the arts. Our leadership in this area establishes an impressive foundation of teaching and research that will inform our plan for the School of Medicine to support the underserved areas of Northern Toronto, York Region, Simcoe County, the District of Muskoka, and the surrounding rural areas. We are so proud to work with our many partners, including the City of Vaughan and Mackenzie Health, one of our lead partners for the School of Medicine which serves more than half a million people across Vaughan, Richmond Hill, and King. Mackenzie Health is a leader in supporting residents across Western York Region with two full-service hospitals, each with state-of-the-art technological capabilities. The development of the Vaughan Healthcare Centre Precinct and the York University School of Medicine will solidify Vaughan as a destination of choice for students, talent and businesses in the health and health technology sectors. The support announced in the provincial budget last week for increased physician education in Ontario comes at a critical time for us all. We did not get here by accident. I want to thank, there's just too many people to thank individually. I almost feel I should thank every single one of you who I'm looking at right now. But I do want to acknowledge the entire York University team who worked on this proposal intensively, especially for the last 18 months, including the School of Medicine Steering Committee, our advisors, working groups, and our Board of Governors. And I know our chair, Paul Saparis, is in the audience um, somewhere right now. Gr amazing partners with the City of Vaughan, Mackenzie Health, specifically Mayor Del Duca and Mr. Altav Stationwala, as well as all of our other healthcare collaborators and partners, many of whom are here today representing York Region more broadly, hospitals, community health clinics, and medical associations. I would also like to thank Minister Stephen Lecce, who advocated for this project, along with other Vaughan colleagues, and of course, all of the other ministers here today for their important roles in helping um, advance our proposal, especially Ministers Dunlap and Jones and their amazing teams. And finally, I want to thank Premier Doug Ford for his leadership and for being responsive to the pressing needs in health care and having a clear commitment to a healthier future for Ontarians. It is now my great pleasure to introduce Premier Doug Ford. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. I can't even wipe the smile off my face. This is an, a, just an amazing day, and, and the folks that are seeing it on TV can't see how many people that are here that are key to making this happen, each and every one of you. And uh, good morning, everyone. I'm, I'm thrilled to be back here in the great city of Vaughan alongside the whole, the whole list. Here we go. Minister Jones, Minister Dunlop, Minister Lecce, the champ that's really pushed this all the way through, Minister Mulroney, Minister Parsa, Minister Calandra, MPPs, Don Gallagher, Murphy, Logan Kennepathy, Laura Smith, a local MPP that's pushed this as well. So thank you, Laura. Uh, Billy Pang and Daisy Way. I also want to acknowledge my good pal, Mayor Del Duca. And I, I always say this, so I, I had, what do we have, 22 mayors uh, at the house one time in the summer, and I called them out. I don't know if I embarrassed them, but I said I wish every mayor was like Mayor Del Duca. He, uh, he gets things done, he understands the system, and uh, when he comes over to the house, we sit in, outside, you know, in the, the solarium, but you should see how we smash a, a dozen cannolis back real quick. <laughs> I'll tell you, between him and I, it's, man, I'll, uh, and they're great cannolis by, uh, from Vaughn. He always brings a box of cannolis. And I, I bring the Tim Horton Timbits. So, anyways, uh, Old May President Dr. Andrew Park, Oak Valley Health CEO Joanne Marr, and the great leader over at York University, President and Vice Chancellor Dr. Lenton. Thank, thank you for everything you've done. You, I'll tell you, talk, talk about persistence and leadership and. I guess you heard the other speeches. There's so many people involved that make things like this happen. It's never one person, one, you know, one sector or, or any level of government. It's everyone working together, and that's what I love. 
And a big thank you to Altaf. Altaf, you run an incredible hospital here and the team at McKenzie Health and Cordelucci Vaughn Hospital for hosting us today. It's just top notch. And I'm, I'm not encouraging people to come here, but if you ever have a chance, uh, you know, you, you see everything is automated. It's probably one of the most high-tech hospitals in the entire country. Uh, last week, our government introduced our 2024 budget. And I want to thank uh, Peter Betham Falvey for doing such a great job on the budget. This budget continues to invest in people and communities, including record investments to make health care more connected and convenient. We're investing $50 billion over the next decade to support more than 50 hospital projects, adding 3,000 new beds to the system. That's on top of the other 3,000 we've already added. Building on our $110 million investment that's connecting over 300,000 people to family doctors and primary care, we're investing another $546 million to connect approximately 600,000 more people to a primary care team. And we're making significant progress to bolster our frontline healthcare workforce. Since 2018, th these are pretty amazing numbers. Um, since 2018, with everyone's help, uh, we've added more than 80,000 nurses in Ontario. In fact, in 2023 was another record year with more than 17,500 nurses registering to work and another 30,000 uh, nursing students in the schools. And in the budget 2024, we announced an additional $128 million to boost enrollment by up to 3,000 nursing students at publicly assisted colleges and universities. So thank you, Minister Dunlop, for always graduating all these great uh, nurses and healthcare workers. We've also added well over 10,800 new doctors. And with this new addition uh, in capacity, we're going to be adding a lot more. And we're breaking down barriers so that highly skilled, internationally trained doctors and doctors from other provinces can care for people here in Ontario. And friends, we've embarked on the largest expansion of our medical school system in more than a decade. I think it's been over 15 years. Last year, we announced an additional 260 undergraduate seats and 449 postgraduate positions at medical schools across the province, including in Brampton at the future home of the new TMU Medical School. And last week in our budget, we announced an initial investment of $9 million to build a new medical school at York University. That's, that's just so exciting. Thank you. Today, I'm pleased to announce that this new medical school, the York University Medical School, will open its doors in 2028. Once at full capacity, it will include seats for up to 240 undergrad students and 293 postgrad students. Importantly, it will be the first medical school in Canada that is focused on training primary care doctors with 70% of postgrad seats devoted to primary care. And, and thank you, doctor, again, for, for doing that because that's, that's a big uh, difference. We need primary care docs uh, more than anything. Because while Ontario has the shortest surgical wait times in all of Canada, and while we lead the country with 90% of people connected to a regular health care provider, we can't stop and we won't stop until we connect everyone in Ontario to primary care. These new seats at York University, they represent Ontario's doctors of the future. The students that will graduate from here will be the next generation of healthcare professionals at Cordelucci Vaughan Hospital, in our long-term care homes, in community settings, and at clinics in Vaughan and throughout our, our province. And we're going to keep working closely with hospitals, associations, and universities and colleges to bolster our pipeline of healthcare talent so that all Ontarians in every corner of our province get the quality care they need closer to home. I want to thank each and every one of you for uh, joining us today and making this happen. Again, I want to emphasize it's a real Team Ontario approach and I'm just so grateful and may God bless the people of Ontario. Thank you so much.
We'll now go to reporters' questions. If reporters could please line up at the microphone behind me and identify yourselves by name and outlet. It'll be one question and one follow-up. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Snay Dougal with the Trillium. I, I wanted to ask you, Premier, about the federal government's housing announcement yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, the, the feds are hinging funding to build more homes in part on whether you allow four units as of right across Ontario. Um, this infrastructure funding is something you've been asking for. You've said that you're okay um, with four units in a single residence, but that you won't enact this as a policy across Ontario. Mm -hmm. um, the opposition is calling you a roadblock to building more homes. Uh, are you going to take the federal government up on its offer, on its funding offer, and allow four units, not stories, as of right uh, across the province? Well, first of all, uh, it's good news that they've uh, come and stepped up to the plate. See, the difference between ourselves and the federal government, and I, I want to work with them, I am working with them on a lot of different issues uh, on a daily basis. Uh, I don't believe in forcing municipalities. I believe in working with municipalities. I've walked a mile in their shoes, and Mayor Del Duca, he knows best where to put the housing, uh, not the province, or for sure, not the federal government. And uh, I'm going to leave that up to each municipality to decide because they know better than the province and, and the federal government. Uh, what we announced is well over $1.8 billion of infrastructure to enable them and give them the tools and give them the support they need to get the homes built. You know, I, I think everyone is relatively on the same page. No matter if it's a federal government or ourselves or municipalities, we want, all of us want to get homes built and, and we're going to get there. And I, I know I'm very confident, uh, but we need to make sure the municipalities uh, are able to build what is best in their community because uh, many things I've learned, but in 444 municipalities across this province, every municipality is a little different and every municipality has different needs. But I have all the confidence in the world and the mayors and the council uh, to put homes where they belong. Okay. Um, and I mean, your government has also accused uh, political opponents of nimbyism. <coughs> Um, but you recently said you wouldn't allow four plexes as of right because of the shouting and screaming from communities where they would be built. Um, Premier, well, isn't, isn't that nimbyism? Well, th thanks again for that, that question. I'll go back to how I answered last time. It's not up to the province to dictate uh, where every single building is going to be. I believe in letting municipalities determine what is good for their communities and what's not good for their communities. They understand uh, where to build the homes, and no one's better at it than Mayor Del Duca. All you have to do is look at the new skyline that's going up along Highway 7, and it uh, looks beautiful, by the way. I can't wait to see more towers go up. So we're going to work with them, and we're all, we're all working together. Uh, make no mistake about it. Uh, behind the scenes, we're in constant communication with the PMO. Uh, we're in constant communication with municipalities. And uh, I have one of the greatest uh, housing ministers, Minister uh, Calandra, that's uh, full-time talking to all 444 municipalities. So we'll, we'll get it done, all working together. That's the key thing. Let's work together. Hi, Premier. It's Chris Rochelle from the Toronto Star. Hi, Chris. Hi. I wanted to ask about the choice of York University for a medical school. I mean, it is $600 million in debt. Six of its 10 faculties operated at a loss. It has endless labor strife. There's actually a strike there right now. So are you and how are you going to address these issues uh, to make the med school successful? Well, I have all the confidence in the world and Dr. Linton. You could go to any area, any sector, any hospital or any uh, university and start poking holes in it. I, I'll tell you, York University is one of the top universities, in my opinion, uh, around the country. They deliver phenomenal students into different sectors, and I have 100% confidence in, uh, in York University, and, and especially up here in, in Vaughan. Wouldn't it be great if kids that grew up in Vaughan uh, went, to, went to the medical university and here, worked here at uh, Cordelucci Bon Hospital. I think that's a, a great, great story, but um, I, I think the world of York. 
And back in February, um, Minister Paul Calandra promised legislation before the summer break covering uh, municipal politicians who harass staff. Can you just clarify if that legislation is still coming? Well, I'll pass it over to uh, Mr. Minister Calandra. So yeah, yeah, thank you for the question. As I said at, uh, at the time in February that we are going to continue to work with uh, uh, the Attorney General to make sure that uh, whatever we brought forward was both uh, constitutional and, uh, and uh, effective, uh, and we're continuing that work. Thank you. Brian Lilly, uh, Toronto Sun. If I could hear from uh, both the Premier and Minister Jones, and Dr. Leitner, if you want to jump in. Part of the problem that we keep hearing about with graduating medical students is uh, either they leave to go somewhere else, United States, or that too many of the seats are held by people who are not from Canada and don't plan on staying in Canada. So as you announce this new medical school, as you announce, um, you know, continue to make announcements about TMU, how do you make sure that the graduates actually end up working in Ontario? We're, we're paying for a lot of the training. How do you keep them here? Uh, one way or the other. Well, thank you so much, uh, Brian, for that, because that is my number one pet peeve, as, as the minister probably knows. You know, I, I just, I want to support Ontario students, and God bless everyone else coming to our country, and, you know, uh, someone from ABC country comes and pays a little more, and I understand that money pays for some of the, the, the local students. Uh, right now, I asked the minister, and I've been on this for a while, uh, you know, what is the percentage? It's 18% of 100% are foreign students coming in. But we, we uh, in my opinion, and we'll continue working with the ministry, uh, get rid of the 18%. I'm not being mean, but I'm taking care of our students, our kids first. These kids, and I talked to a lot of the parents, they have to go to Ireland, or they go down to the Caribbean, or they go to Australia, or they go down to the United States, and guess what happens? They meet someone, and they don't come back home. So and that, that's, you know, God, yeah, it's good for them meeting someone. Bring, bring that person back, back to Ontario. But I want 100% Ontario students, uh, you know, going to these universities. But Brian, you read my mind. I have been on this like a dog on a bone, I'll tell you. So, um, Minister? So how do we make sure that the students that we graduate stay in Ontario? We expand primary care. And we've done that in February with 78 new or expanded primary care multidisciplinary teams. And of course, we've done it in last week's uh, budget, where over a half a billion dollars has been set aside to expand primary care. It means that wherever a new graduate wants to practice in the province of Ontario, there will be opportunities. And I will say, you know, working with the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario, we have actually now in Ontario removed a additional barrier for internationally trained students to come who want to work and practice in the province of Ontario. So if you trained and and uh, currently are in the US, UK, Ireland, or Australia, uh, you have one less barrier to make sure that you can come here in Ontario uh, with your family to practice medicine in Ontario. But I really think that the, the big piece is as we expand primary care opportunities, as we build out over 50 capital hospital builds, we are seeing that there are many, many opportunities for students who want to practice and live in the province of Ontario, and we will continue to do that under the leadership of Premier Ford. Thanks, Brian. Thank you so much, Premier. You know, we went, one question that I heard over and over again from the government were exactly that question, because there was an appreciation that primary care was the gap that we were facing, and so how we were actually going to attract students into primary care and keep them in primary care and keep them in from the communities that we're recruiting them from. We looked at all new medical schools really around the world, to look at what needs to be done to actually enhance students staying in primary care. It starts right from what we talk about, what the identity of our school of medicine. Then it's about the whole admissions process, about how you are attracting the kinds of questions that you're asking. So you're attracting the students who want to be in primary care. And then it's about the curriculum. 
and then our students will be getting extended opportunities to actually work in primary care, which often in many, many medical schools, because there's so many specializations, can be quite a short period of time. Our students will be spending a longer period of time and they'll be spending their learning opportunities, their electives and so forth, right in the communities from which we recruit them and from where we want them to stay. So we've spent a lot of time thinking through how you actually do increase um, students wanting, like who, who are you attracting in the beginning, and then actually keeping them in primary care. Thank you. Next question also for the Premier and, and Minister Jones. The Chief Medical Officer of Health, uh, Dr. Moore, issued a report last week that uh, seemed to make it, he, he wants to make it harder to get things like alcohol, but easier to get opioids. Um, it, raising the drinking age to 21, uh, engaging in the safer supply programs that uh, are, are in British Columbia. Your government put out a statement that seemed pretty strongly against it. Are you at odds with uh, the chief medical officer uh, now? You, you used to stand side by side with him quite a bit. Well, I, I think the world of Dr. Moore, as far as I'm concerned, he's a champion. He has his opinion. We have ours. Uh, we believe in treating people like adults all across the world. You get to go into a retail store, a big box store, and buy a bottle of wine with your steak and maybe a six pack of beer like the rest of the world does. So that's what we, we believe in and I'll always support Dr. Moore and the job he's doing. Uh, do we disagree? Yes, we, we disagree. I disagree with raging, uh, age, raising the age to 21 and one of my principles were, you know, these young, young people, they put a, a uniform on and, and go fight for freedom around the world uh, driving tra uh, tanks and heavy uh, military equipment and again putting their lives on the line for democracy and they can't go back later and have a beer that doesn't cut it so uh, that was one of my uh, principles since they're you know if they're willing to fight for our country they're, they should be able to have a beer at, at the end there but uh, I'll pass it over to uh, the minister you know, I think it's pretty clear with the investments our government has made, whether that's expansion in youth wellness hubs, whether that's new treatment facilities, or whether that's expansions of uh, rapid access, that we want pathways for treatment who have addictions issues, and we are making those investments. We'll continue to do that, but I think at the end of the day, we have to let Ontarians be adults, just as we see in other Canadian jurisdictions, and I think there is a better way than legalizing um, drugs and opioids in particular. Thank you, Brian. Hi there, Alan Hale from Queen's Park today. Hi, Alan. In the uh, past, uh, your government has uh, forced um, boundary changes on municipalities because you felt that they needed to build housing outside of their, like Hamilton, do, because you wanted them to build housing outside of their current boundaries, even though the city council wanted to do density inside its current boundaries. And I'm just wondering, now you're saying that uh, you you respect council municipal council decisions about where they want to build housing. I'm just wondering when did that change happen? What spurred this sudden respect for the decisions of municipalities? Well, that respect started in uh, 2010 when I became a councillor, and I see the hard work they do and the mayors do. So I've never disrespected uh, municipalities. I've always worked with them hand in hand. We have a very good relationship. I always joke around with the uh, uh, Minister of Housing that I should be the Minister of Housing as well because of Municipal Affairs because I, I talked about 10 mayors every single day. They all have my phone number, so I've never lost uh, any respect for them. I like working with them. Uh, they, they have their job and it's a very tough job. It's front facing, right on people's doorsteps, unlike the, the, the federal government or even the provincial government. Even though Mrs. Jones calls for a pothole to be fixed, I'm, I'm there. I'm in. Uh, you know, you got to take care of your people. Well, that's it. That's our job. I, I don't put the federal, provincial, or municipal hat on. I, I take care of the people of Etobicoke North. In uh, Milton, there is a, a lot of people are wondering about what is going to go on with the uh, quarry in uh, Campbell, Campbellville. Uh, apparently, uh, Z Hamid, your, your candidate for the upcoming by-election, said that you told him last week, I believe, that, uh, the, that the quarry is not going to happen. And it's led a lot of people in Milton, uh, voters, to uh, wonder why you're going ahead with an, 
an environmental assessment that you apparently have already chosen the outcome of. And even the, uh, the proponent, proponent of the quarry has said that they're baffled by your, uh, your approach to this, that if, you mm. should, if, you're, if you've already decided the outcome of this EA, you should just cancel it, compensate them so they can go build a quarry somewhere else. And I'm just wondering, why aren't you doing that? Well, aren't we so lucky to have Z running for us and, and Milton, he was a counselor, and he, he's well respected. And when I went door knocking, every single person knew, knew him. So what a great representative for Milton. We're gonna go through the process. We're gonna go through the environmental assessment and at the end of the environmental assessment, uh, that decision will be made. But I always govern based on the people. If people don't want something, then the government shouldn't do it. It's, it's pretty simple. And I think I've, I've proved that to the people of Ontario. If people don't like that decision, um, I'm not too shy to say, okay, let's review it. Let's uh, you know move a few things back and forth. That's the way I govern. The worst thing you do as a government or as a leader or premier or mayor or anything, Dig your heels in and say, I'm not budging, and no matter what. That's, that's not good governance. It's not really governing for the people. You've got to govern for the people. And that's the way I've done it, our family's done it, and our team's doing it. Ali Shiasan from CBC News. I'm asking a question on behalf of one of my colleagues who's working on a different story. Okay. Um, the mayor of Whitby says that she's frustrated with the slow pace of the construction of the Lake Health uh, or Lake Ridge Health Hospital in Durham. She says your government is stalling the project. When is construction supposed to go ahead? And what do you say to the mayor's concerns? Well, I think that's the mayor that actually is getting collecting people's names, holding a lottery that if you give me your name and your email address, um, you get a free gym membership, or you get an iPhone watch, or you get all these little treats. Uh, I don't know, but <laughs> I'll ask the minister. I don't think that's proper for mayors to go out. It's like me going out to a community and saying, let me collect all your emails for certain purposes, and all of a sudden, I get these emails, I'm, I'm offering them watches, I'm offering gym memberships. Folks, that is wrong. You can't be doing that. Elected officials cannot be pulling these games. We've committed to make sure we have a hospital in Durham. We're gonna go through the process. And uh, I'm not gonna be bullied by that mayor out there that's constantly going, going out there and offering everything under the kitchen sink and. Maybe the integrity commissioner should be looking into, are politicians uh, allowed to offer gifts if they get your email? It's, un it's really unbelievable. So uh, I'll leave it at that. But uh, the folks at Durham, we've shown them a tremendous amount of love. They'll be getting a hospital and we'll determine the site. Just have one more question from me because we have uh, some news that's been happening this morning and perhaps the Minister of Health would want to uh, give us an update if she knows anything about uh, the hospital outage at UHN and sort of the status of things right now. Yeah, thank you. So obviously the uh, the weather last night and today has, uh, the wind in particular, has made a challenge in terms of um, an outage that is impacting UHN, but I've been assured that they are working actively on it and I have all the confidence in the world that that will be resolved as quickly as possible with uh, Toronto Hydro and UHN. Thank you. This will be the last reporter. Good morning, Premier. It's Sean from CTV News. How are you today? Good, Sean. How are you doing? Good, thanks. The question is, the Prime Minister uh, announced $6 billion in funding yesterday saying it was aimed at cutting red tape, building more homes and helping communities grow. What's your reaction and what does it sound, it sounds like the federal government is following your playbook and getting more homes built. Yeah, and thank you for that. You know, we have a, I'll work with anyone. We have a good relationship on working on a lot of uh, different items and if they want to hand over $6 billion uh, across the uh, the country, well, God bless them. I was talking to a few premiers last night about it, and uh, again, I just go back to what I believe in. Let the municipalities, let the mayors and councillors uh, decide where to build, what to build, how high to build. Uh, they know their communities better than anyone, and uh, but we're, we're going to continue uh, giving them every tool on our side, the $1.8 billion of infrastructure, strong mayor powers, a whole list of items to uh, get homes built. Again, that's all our goals. All, all the federal government uh, is doing is trying to help, and the province is trying to help, and the municipalities are trying to help 
It's all, it's all coming together. Do you know where we need help more than anything, anywhere? And uh, you'll see homes pop up like mushrooms. The Bank of Canada, Canada, you can't keep these interest rates at 5%. I'm telling you, it's gonna hurt people so badly. Another year or two years, people can't afford an extra two to $3,000 when they renew their mortgage. You have to drop the interest rates minimum down to 4%. You get it down to four, three and a half percent, you'll see homes pop up everywhere. And it allows uh, the, the builders to go out there and get funding to build homes as well. So this is, we're all pushing. Now the Bank of Canada has to uh, make changes. But folks, thank you. This is a fantastic announcement. And again, I just want to thank everyone for being here and, and all the leadership through York and our ministers and, and the mayor. And this is what happens when we all work together. Incredible things like this happen. And uh, again, I just want to thank you. God bless. Thank you. Bye-bye.